Hello everybody, welcome back to some more feature 12. Last time we left off where I was a hostage and you doesn't know it's us. Money gather gathered by non-profit organization to aid such places existed, but it wasn't enough. That money wasn't provided solely for their institution either. No place on earth is able to provide infinite funding. And that was akin to losing his own mother. For the institution itself, they had lost the one major pillar supporting it. The people of this country would feel for her plight as she worked hard in a far off land. She truly believed in the people of her homeland. You runs down the events in his life that have led up to now. Mao struggles to find the right words. Based on his age, Mao had been born during that whole ordeal. Despite this, she had no clue that any of what he just said had happened. The fact that he had brought a fellow Japanese into an equation settled things. She hates his boy for what he did to Naomi. Just thinking about him makes her angry. Still, she finally realizes that she should direct the anger at herself too. Age is of no consequence here. The general apathy of the club had killed that woman. None of it serves to pardon the actions that result in Naomi's death though. It is however a fact that Mao has no means to refute his claims. Everyone there listens to you, to you attentively. その後、僕は傭兵となった。傭兵と言っても、使い捨ての少年兵だよ。敵なら誰でも倒したよ。僕は戦う才能が、銃を扱う射手の才能があった。そうするしかなかった。そうできちゃったから。His continuous survivor may not have been what he desired. Survivor on the battlefield only yields the death of others. All this, even after Mama's efforts to teach him compassion. As such, he disposed of his emotions in order to get used to the idea of killing others. The bits of emotions left over from the process remained sealed and hidden within him. Also, he could progress forward without losing his sense of self. In exchange, he found a new reason to carry on. <laughs> He speaks of how they taught him that people can become heroes in death, but how they can offer their lives up for the sake of their reliefs. In doing so, no one can claim they are wrong. Dying in order to protect what's important to them is the one true way for people to become heroes. <coughs> Mama was dead because I became a hero in my life. I was dead because I was dead. Mama was dead because I was dead. Yeah, that's true, but she didn't kill anybody in the process. だから僕も英雄になりたかったやがて僕はヌル日本支部へと流れてきた彼らの幹部が日本に来た時僕は自分の過去を少しだけ話す機会があったからね無関心への抵抗僕には難しかったけどしっくりきたよ世界への復讐を果たして僕は英雄になるよ Saying that you took his hostage over towards the elevator. Imagoro, Boku no Nakamanga Tembo da yo senkyo steiru hazda. Hijo kaidan kara iko to stemo muda da yo. Soko nimo, Boku no Nakamanga iru kara. Leaving that warning behind, he makes his way to the elevator. His phone is pointed away from his face once inside. He doesn't want the stream to notice his pained expression as the door closes.
The girl he had taken hostage cries the entire way up. She's visibly shaking too. You feel no compassion whatsoever for her. She's about to die, so why should he? If he feels anything towards her, it's gratitude that he she hasn't made much of a fuss. I think Rinka's crying because of his past. The observatory is mere one minute ride on the elevator away. He spends his entire time reflecting on the past he has spoken about. The idea of people getting emotionally over his story does nothing but annoy him. Has anyone in this country gone through the same miserable experience as him? He hates those who consider themselves different from the masses because they feel a speck of concern over events like the ones he spoke of. It means nothing if no effort is made to change things. The elevator continues to climb to the tower as he ponders this. Before long, they reach the observatory. After a brief moment, floor, floor announcement, the elevator door opens. Odette. Upon departing the, the elevator, he finds himself staring down the muzzle of a gun. A woman with freakishly muscular body is pointing a high caliber revolver between his eyes. It is none other than numero X1 against whom he has fought previously. <laughs> A gunshot rings out. He was convinced his comrades were waiting for him. That led to him letting his guard down. He hadn't received word about this either. That's why he wasn't able to move before the gunshot went off. He remains unscathed, however. She hadn't aimed for him. Instead, her target was the phone he had been using to stream the events. The phone is flung back into the elevator as it breaks apart in midair. He wastes no time in readying the same gun he shot Alan with immediately after. <laughs> A familiar voice shouts from behind him. The person said, "The person said voice belonging to, belongs to takes out a gun of their own, but doesn't shoot. Instead, they use it as a blunt device, swinging it at you's hand. Is holding with his own. Oh, sorry. He, you obey, making sure to keep his bag safe as well. When the girl's swing misses, she's bent over and wide open to retaliation. A black substitute oozes onto the floor from her hair. All the new to ooze." Ghost streaks reveal themselves. Oh my wa Shishi my Rinka. You pieces together pieces together the hostage he took wasn't was her in disguise. Although surprised his mov movements are not affected, he reflectively fires his weapon at her. However, dealing with two opportunities opponents in a closed space like this proves reckless even for him. Odette gets a grip off his clothes and finally pulls him towards her. The shots fired at Rinka go astray as a result, piercing right through the elevator ceiling. Odette takes aim at his back with her own gun. Oh! What did I do? Oh my god! Sorry. Okay. I had to go back. Oh god. The space between his back and his bag to breathe her size. She fires off two shots, both hitting the shoulder straps of his bag. Whoa. One slight miscalculation would have resulted in hitting the bomb concealed within the bag. Fate may have kept them alive, but they still would have been seriously injured from the explosion at such close proximity. I'll just mark an assumption. Sure, she hits her target and serves it back from you. <laughs> she does this because she knows how much damage the bomb could cause. He re re redirects his attention towards the bag as not to drop it. His fine was getting hurt himself, but there wouldn't be enough victims where the bomb took off here. His decision to prioritize the bag is the exact opposite of his Odette. She delivers a swift, proper kick to his back while his eyes are glued to the floor. Being almost doubled his weight, Odette's kick sends him flying. Odette grins from ear to ear as she sees him take to the air. She isn't even concerned about the bag. Have a day! Rinka tosses her gun and lunges for the bag. She goes in headfirst, arms fully extended. The impact against the floor would likely cause the bomb to go off. That realization is what causes her to jump us out in a moment's thought. <laughs> she manages to catch the bag with both hands as both her body and her face continue to skid across the floor. While she is able to prevent the bomb from going off, her face now feels like it's been peeled away from her skull. <laughs> the bomb has been stolen from him mere moments before he could accomplish this goal. His outcry is the result of letting his emotions take control. It is the only thing left he can do. And it was probably the scariest moment of my life. A bag with a bomb inside almost crushed onto the floor. I would have had to bear the brunt of the explosion had I failed to catch it. 
but it's an experience I've been through once before. I wouldn't have died this time, but who knows how badly I would have been burned. My face would have been unrecognizable. My actions helped us pull through the initial phase of our plan that much I've confident about. She doesn't care. I normally be surprised to see that she's still smiling during all this, but I now know this is what she lives for. Things are going just as we planned. There are no traces of any customers, no used comrades. We are the only three here. Hmm? Ah. Nosta。てめえみたいのを期待したが、残念ながら素人同然で、顎体がなかった。10人はいたはずだよ。てめえが3人集めても 大した that's why we made this plan to make the, take the bomb away from him. His lack of consideration for his own life made things far more difficult to handle than they would normally. I was worried when Odette said she would handle all his comrades, but she did, really didn't manage to pull it off. He directs that line straight at me. Then he raises his gun and points it my way. <laughs> but I'm not his target. It's mostly, most likely the bomb. Taking his focus off of death proves to be a mistake though. She isn't the one to let that slip past her. Making use of her reach provided by her height advantage, she launches another kick right at his jaw before he can fire it. He barely dodges in time, but Odette doesn't let up. She continues with an unrelenting barrage of punches and kicks. He whips out a knife with his left hand. Odette backsteps. She must figure she'll get slashed if she tries to kick him again. Yu takes advantage of her hesitation by tripping her up with a left leg sweep. It causes her to lose balance, but she manages to kick him in the stomach during her fall. He remains unarmed even after that and fires his weapon at her. That dreadful bang echoes around the observatory. He fires four consecutive shots. It makes the exact same sound as when he shot Alan earlier. Regardless, not one shot hit or dead because her kick before has knocked him off balance. There's a distant clang as the bullets ricochet off the floor. Both of them collapse to the ground. He was the first to spring back up, likely due to his smaller frame. He readies his knife and flings it at Odette. As soon as he throws it, he chases it straight towards her. Odette doesn't have time to back up, and instead opts to draw her gun while prone. She fires the same moment. I notice her action. He does the same. The sound of both guns going off overlaps. His shot is directed at neither me nor Odette, maybe because he's firing while at full sprint. Meanwhile, Odette shot somewhat somehow connects with the knife he had thrown, which causes it to twirl up towards the ceiling. Yu shot bounces off a small crevice in the floor, sending it straight to Odette's hand. That's what I think. Anyway, it barely misses her hand and strikes her gun instead. It breaks apart and flies across the room. You point is gonna know that. For a brief moment, I'm unable to discern what has happened. For some reason, you left his gun also floor. Shall after that? I noticed blood dripping down his right hand. <gasps> his words helped me piece it all together. Well, they must have caught the knife where she deflected earlier. And she threw it back at him just in time. 
さて仕切り直しっとこの音 The fan ringing of police sirens can be heard from the surface I'm amazed it's taken them this long to arrive Considering the gravity of the situation, it may not be just the regular police and fire brigade either. The right police may have also come. After having noticed this, Yuri snatches up his gun and sprints towards the door leading to the emergency stairs. He fails to anticipate that the stairwell will be blocked off by a certain someone, however. You must have figured everything out in that moment. Alan disguised himself as one of the staff members, but had accounted for the possibility of getting shot. With that in mind, he made sure both to wear both a proper vest and tape additional plat plating around the parts of his stomach that was most likely to be targeted. Apparently, he went with rubber plating to ensure that the sound wouldn't give away the fact that he was okay. Blow was fake too. He had gotten a hold of some previously. All of this, including myself, being taken hostage and Odette neutralizing him was part of the plan. I wasn't able to do anything once they were locked in combat, but that was also expected. All I had to do was make sure the bomb didn't go off. Not only is you injured, but Alan also had his own gun on him. Once apparently, you is now trapped between two monsters. That said, you fires off a number of shots before Alan and Odette have the time, the chance to react. Every single piece. Every single shot pierces the fire extinguisher placed throughout the observatory. <laughs> it takes little more than a moment for an entire room to be cloaked in white smoke. Yu's <laughs> voice comes from in front of me while I struggle to see what's going on. The weight of the bag suddenly gets lifted from my arms. I don't have time to respond. I'm too busy panicking about what to do. Alan takes my hand in, in his before dragging me along with them because. I'm just still shaken up to move on my own. Alan is a nice guy for someone who threatened a lady and then myself. After the initial surprise of the stream suddenly cutting out, my house switches over to a new site for up-to-date information. The situation is still somewhat unclear, but it seems like they failed to blow up to Tucker Tower. However, the girl who was taken hostage had vanished. It's entirely possible that she's still being take kept as a hostage. Amongst all this, Mao finds herself worried over something. She could hardly believe it herself, but Mao was confident that she wouldn't mistake the voice of a close friend. That makes the unread message she sent all the more concerning. Oh, she's concerned that she was taken hostage. Things get crazy at Tokyo Tower thanks to the police and the fire brigade arrival. We're in, we are able to make our escape while the police are busy arresting Yu's comrade. Fortunately, we could get out via emergency car staircase with relative ease thanks to the flood of people entering the place. Once out, we make our way back to our base in Yokohama. Ore. Arigato. Ita oh, sorry. She hands me a bag filled with fast food. A burger and fries, to be precise. Next to her, she sits. Next to her sits a bottle of alcohol she got from the convenience store. I take a bite of the comically oversized burger. The vicious ketchup and warm meat fills my mouth. The overwhelming flavors are somehow delicious. More delicious than I remember. Maybe it's due to how tired I am. Come to think of it, this is the first thing I've eaten today. My heart's still racing from all that's gone down. Down. Dear Lord. I guess I've never had time to think, let alone actually get some food. Yeah,はり。<laughs> Odette munches away from her burger and fries while she responds. I figure her pal palate would match her taste and knowledge for coffee, but nope, she just seems to love the, f the act of eating. There's something pleasant about glee with, in w with which she does so. Especially when you factor in that this is her third burger. <laughs> 
必要ならするまでだ痩せ我慢もか<笑>分かっていたから思ったより痛みはなかった試してみるかいいや断る私だったら反撃しちまうよ I wasn't able to get you to regret card. He turned out to be a much tougher opponent than I had assumed. I did get to hear about his past, though. I'm finally able to understand the foundation behind his and his organization's belief. Linka, how was the effect of the song? I was able to hear about the past of Yu's past. I was able to hear about the past of Yu's past. I was able to hear about the past of Yu's past. But, you 本人に同情している声は多いみたい。It's safe to say his stream worked. All the news channels are reporting on what happened today. While it's fortunate that there were no victims, the influence it's having on the world at large can't be understated. You got a trackstar. Canary Okina, Sekai no Kaihenga Okonawa Rutaron. If things get reworked so that he died during a suicide attack on the Yamato, Yamanote line, then it's likely that both his attacks on Amecha and what happened today will be undone. Society has become far more alert due to the recent strings of attack. People are even starting to feel bad for their, the perpetrators after seeing you stream. His actions instilling fear and a great number of people have no doubt affected society as a whole. Will that be undone through his elimination as well? We won't know until it happens. しかしどうしたもんかね見事に逃げられちまったもんだから追いようもね僕の情報網でも彼の動向はまだわからないヌル日本支部は今日をきっかけに事実上壊滅状態になるだろうがユウは爆弾を持っている爆弾一つでも人の命を奪うことはできる You are Tomara Nidaruna. Kareva Kito, Ashtau Gokimas. Kokoratari de Marnoka. I swallowed a chunk of my burger before continuing. You are Tashinita Ashtanoasa, Kondo Koso Ume, and Ketchakuote. Dakara Ashtamo Gokuno, a Machigai Nai. Soka Demo Soreshka Wakaranai. <clears throat> 一体何をしようとしているのか順当なのは東京タワーを狙うだろうな警備が厳重になっている中でやり遂げたらさらに効果は上がるさ I fear that be likely to nerve myself his beliefs are steadfast yet they don't tie into his desire for me to kill him he's been oddly focused on the idea of suddenly the score with fate too what does that mean what does he mean by that 明日も早朝から東京タワーへ向かおう手がかりがない今そうするしかない Both myself and Odette not in agreement We take some time to rest up after we finish eating Unfortunately I can't go home now that we know you plan on making his move tomorrow Well I'm probably best off not going back anyway Odette took care of the Tokyo Tower security cams But the police may come to question me on the chance they saw there's footage of me I still got a gun on me, so they probably arrest me on the spot. <sighs> What's wrong? Today was a whole new experience for me. It left me absolutely exhausted. Thinking back, it's a miracle that I came out of it unscathed. That's how crazy it was. There's a public bath house about 20 minutes away from food on foot, so the three of us make the trek to get washed up. Sure, I built up a bit of sweat on the way back, but considering the state I was in before the bath, it's worth it. Once we return, we go straight to sleep. We're going to be getting up early, just as early as we did today. What's more, tomorrow is likely to take even more of a toll on us, considering we don't know what you was planning. Well, that falls asleep for us this time, probably because she was drinking. But knowing her, she'd probably spring right up if we even thought about approaching her. I wouldn't be surprised that after witnessing her fight with you this afternoon. Yes, Alan, I am. What about you? That's all he says before he covers his face again. I want to thank him for accepting the role he took on today, but I hold my tongue. We're just using one another for our own benefit. He didn't do it for my sake. 
It's the same guy who took babies as hostage. I can't forget that. Just as I tried to fall asleep, he poses a question to me in a hushed tone. Yes. I, I think so, at least. A question that doesn't even need an answer at that. Even so, I reply with a nod. Nara. It is. I don't want to. I'm crying. Both Naomi and myself treated it that way whenever we talked about divine selection. But now Naomi is gone. I don't have any choice but to commit that sin if I want to get back, get her back. Then Nara should have been alive in the first place, Alan. あるいは最後の一人になり死の運命を乗り越えてしまうことの方が罪かもしれないとも思うそうなると結果的に最後の一人になるために女神の選定で他人を脱落させるという行為は罪罪罪罪罪罪罪罪罪罪罪罪罪
Actually, they'll probably come along, even if I give them vague explanation. There's no guarantee I'm, I'm right, but it's not like they'll have any other leads. They don't have much of a choice. I can't let them come, though. I won't be able to reach the answer I'm looking for if I don't do this on my own. Alrighty, and I'm gonna leave it off here. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye!